Welcome to the Mimotion Yuka review. In today's video, we are going to show off everything there is to know about the Yuka robotic lawnmower. This includes the Yuka, the Mimotion app, how the lawn sweeper works, and so much more. In the first part of this video, I'm going to give you a full overview of the Yuka. I'll give you my experience and what I think about it. I'll dive into the app and show you how that works, and we will just go over how awesome this robotic lawnmower is. The second half of this video will be my full experience from start to finish, how we set up the RTK unit as well as setting up the lawnmower and setting up zones so we can cut the grass. Now Mimotion is having a huge sale on October 8th and 9th during Amazon Prime Day. They will have the Yuka and the Luba on sale up to $600 off so I'll leave links in the description to where you can purchase this and the best deals available on the internet on October 8th and 9th during all the big huge sales that everybody's doing. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the RTK and base station, and that's over on my deck. This is the RTK unit. It has an antenna on it, and then there's a GPS antenna built into the top of it. On this side, you can see the green light located right there. And that is an indication light to tell you if the RTK unit is working properly. If it's green, it means it's getting signal and functioning properly. Uh, if it's red or yellow, you'll need to make sure that you have it in an open area where there's nothing above it that would be interfering with its signal. Now, my plan is to remove this pole and move the RTK up on my roof line up on near the soffit, and that'll give it a lot better signal. I haven't had any signal issues, but I did have this move once whenever there was a really strong wind and it shifted the whole zone over a little bit and just caused it not to work right. So we're gonna remount that in a different location. And this is the charging station slash base station where basically the RTK and the charging station communicate together. And it basically is how the Yuka operates. And this is where it goes to charge. Now my Yuka did get stuck in the mud the last time it went out, so it's pretty muddy. I got a lot of it off, but uh, you can see the remnants of it right there on the ground. So I do need to clean it, but it's almost the end of the season, so we'll take the Yuka and the lawn sweeper kit back into the garage for storage. But next year, my plan is to clean this whole place up, uh, and I'm not talking about just the side part of the yard, the whole entire yard. Uh, there's a lot of things that I would like to do to improve it and this is really going to help me maintain my lawn so that I can do other things like ride e-bikes. <laughs> now I had to level this off a little bit. That's why you kind of just see dirt right here and then I have all my extension cords for my Halloween decorations sitting there. So the setup was incredibly easy. The only thing is it took a long time to do the first updates. So the very first thing you wanna do when you set up the Yuka is update the firmware, which we'll see in the next section of this video. But it takes a long time, uh, about 30 minutes each. So you'll wanna give yourself enough time to get this set up. And then you have to draw perimeters. So when you take the Yuka out, you will draw a perimeter around the yard. So. Uh, anything that you want to avoid, you'll kind of want to go around. So we'll, we would start here, go down here, go around the air conditioner, go over to the fence, and then go on my side of the yard uh, all the way up, which we programmed, and you'll see that next. Now, I've received a ton of updates since getting the Yuka, and that has really improved the experience. Every time it seems like it gets better and better, it mows better, it knows what things are. Every chance that they get, it looks like they're trying to improve it. And it seems like updates are coming out like weekly. So when you see this video, I've had the Yuka for two months now, and I've been using it multiple times a day. I'll usually start the front yard and side yard during the day and cut the backyard in the evening. So it's literally been running nonstop since I've received it. And I've not had to touch my yard with a lawnmower since getting this. Now, you're still going to have to do maintenance like trimming. Uh, you have to go around and trim around the fence line and the house and utilities and things like that. I spend a lot less time having to mow the lawn, which is great. I need as much extra time as I can to do what I do for a living. It's been a lifesaver. I'm hoping that I get the Luba, which is the more advanced version with all wheel drive and four wheels. That should hopefully happen next season in 2025. So 
Once I get the Yucca and the Luba, I will do a comparison video, so watch out for that. Now the cool thing about this is I can sit in my bed, office, bathroom, living room, kitchen, wherever I want, and monitor it when it's mowing. So let's take it out and I'll show you on the app what that's like. So we're gonna open up the Mamotion app and it says it's ready, so it's ready to go. Um, you can just hit play here and it'll start doing its thing. Or you can just tap on the Yucca and it'll show your zones. Now, I don't have the backyard mapped anymore. I deleted it because I'm going to redo it whenever I go back there to set this up again with the lawn sweeping kit. But right now we just have the side and the front yard and with the dump location here. So you can see the yucca on the map and then you can see the little RTK symbol here and then there's a dump zone. So when we hit play, we can pick which area we want to mow. So we can either choose area one, which is the side yard right here, or area two, which is the front yard, or we can do both. Uh, let's go ahead and just do the side yard. We're gonna hit confirm. Now I do have some Halloween decorations, so we're not gonna let this go fully. Um, I will have to move that whenever I cut the yard again. I think I got one more mow before the end of the season. If you have the sweeper hooked up, you'll want to choose sweeping and that'll enable that to work. You can change your cutting path so you can have it do zigzags or cross pattern or anything you want. Uh, you can have it mix it up. You can change the angle so you can have it at a 90 or a 1. So the angle will be, you know, where it starts the path you can have path spacing so how much how wide it mows um, i have mine set to 8.7 the obstacle detection mode which basically whenever it sees something it'll either run into it or it will avoid it uh, if you do no touch it won't touch anything uh, less touch means it'll maybe touch it but very little amounts of times Perimeter mowing last means it'll mow your perimeter once, twice, three, or four times, or zero. Uh, No-go zone mowing laps, you can choose zero, one, two, or three. You can have it start the perimeter first or the zigzag first. And then you can choose your relative angle. So I have mine cutting in 45 degree angles. So it will uh, do the perimeter first and then it'll start cutting and 45s and it makes a like a checkered pattern and an angle it looks really really cool and then if you are continuing a mow you can choose your progress of where you left off so when you see the end of this video where we're doing the lawn sweeping test uh, at the end of it i quit in the middle of the mow because it was getting dark uh, what i did the next day is i came in here i chose my percentage and then i just had it start so that's nice that you can kind of pause it and start where you want to the next day so if we hit start here it's gonna come off the charger and then it's gonna start doing the perimeter i'll let it just go ahead and go so you can see how this works at the beginning so basically it's going to start right here where i started mapping the lawn and it's going to go around the perimeter of the lawn when it gets done with the perimeter it'll come down here and start doing the crisscross pattern which is really cool now if you're inside your house sitting in bed or you're working and you want to start your mowing session you can actually watch the mow by hitting fpv and fpv will show you a camera view of the mower and you can see exactly where it's going to go make sure it's working properly if it gets stuck you know you can pause it and go fix it, it it'll let you know if it gets stuck or anything happens so you can easily track it here and then go grab it and fix it. Like when it got stuck in the mud, uh, it notified me that it got stuck. It shuts the mow off and then we just have to go and rescue it. This is what you would see if you're inside your house. It actually works a little better inside because you're closer to the router. And then uh, if for whatever reason somebody came up and stole it, that's what the top camera is for. So it has a top camera right up here. And when we get by it, if we were to come up here and grab this, we could see the person's face. That's why they have a camera up there in the top. So that's kind of cool. So we'll switch back and uh, we can just sit here and watch it. Now, let's say we didn't want it to go here and we needed to uh, have it go somewhere else. We can go in here and manually control it. 
let's say we were moving over to the front yard and it got stuck somewhere we can go ahead and drive the lawnmower and you'll see this here uh, we basically control it like a remote control car if it got stuck in the driveway or in the grass somewhere um, you can kind of monitor it inside your house it's bluetooth so it you need to be relatively close i can't stand in my office window and control it from the front yard because sometimes it does get stuck right here in my driveway where it has to go over a little hump and then drive across to the front yard when it does it automatically sometimes it gets stuck i think i've actually fixed that but if it gets stuck you can drive it manually and then if you get it to where you want it to go you can just hit continue and it will start again so we're going to pause it and let's say you're done cutting the grass and you want it to go back to the charging station you can just hit recharge uh, or end if you end it it'll stay in place and then it, you're going to have to have it go to the charging station um, or if you hit that recharge button it'll automatically go or you can just hit this here which will take you back to the charging station so when it's done mowing it will automatically go to the charging station you don't have to do anything if you have everything set up right no obstacles and everything's just working normally this whole thing can be automated and the robot lawnmower will handle everything and go back to the charging station and get you ready for the next mowing session so my plans are to really work on my landscaping and build it around this so places i don't want it to cut like for instance the utilities we're planning on putting a bunch of shrubbery there to kind of hide that area and uh, i'll probably do some landscaping or bricks or stone or something around the perimeter that way the yucca doesn't even have to worry about that and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, we'll go in and uh, just kind of set up the landscaping based on this. There's a couple of areas in the backyard that I want to fix as well. Now in the end of the video today, you're going to see me using the bagger and getting that all set up and unboxed and everything. Uh, it worked really well. The only thing is when you get the bag, if you already have your zone set up to where you're, you're cutting good without the bag, you may have to delete your zones and reset them up again because the bag adds another, you know, couple feet to the back of the yucca. So once you place that on there, um, you're, you got a bag hanging off here. So you, you really need to draw your perimeters again and reset up your zones. That's why I have the back deleted. Normally I have that mapped, but I'm going to go back there and redraw it the next time we mow. Now my yard, like I said, is pretty bad. It's got some spots that need some work we're gonna improve that next season and hopefully i can give you a before and after of what it looked like this time around compared to uh, the future so i'm going to be doing a video on building a garage for this thing so we can protect it next summer i don't want the plastic to get damaged in any way i want it to stay relatively clean and i want it to be protected so we're going to try to build a garage and make it look really nice back here uh, where we're having it stored. Another nice safety feature that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, this little cap here on the wheel, you can actually pop off. So if you pop this little thing off, it has a place right here where you can stick an air tag and it holds it in place. It's designed for that. And then you can put your cap back over. So if for any reason this got taken away, you would be notified and you can kind of track where it goes now why would an e-bike reviewer like me get a Momotion yuka to review well for one i'm very very appreciative of Momotion sending this out like i couldn't believe it when they said they were going to you this is something i've wanted since i bought my house I've wanted a robotic lawnmower because i personally don't like cutting grass that much it isn't so bad but it definitely helps me out and gives me time to do more things. Now I do monitor it when it runs and cuts the grass, so I keep an eye on it, but there have been many times where I just start it, it goes, and then it finishes, and I don't even notice it. I come out here and my lawn's cut, so it's really cool to see that. Check out their sale on Amazon and on their website. 
So thank you, Mimotion, for sending this out. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. The next part's really the, the best part of the video, in my opinion. deck today because I want to get the antenna installed first because I'm not exactly sure if this spot's gonna work or not so we take this cable and we stick it through and then once it gets down there pull it out maybe. and then this runs all the way down like so and it looks like this can only go one or two ways like that there's a little slot Twist this up to tighten it. Okay, and then we're going to install the antenna, which is right here. There's that. And we're just going to mount the thing right here where my TV torch was. I'm going to start on this side of the yard because it's the smallest, easiest part, I think. And this video, we're just going to cut this side and get this side set up. And then the next video, I'm going to set up zones and paths. And uh, there's going to be about three or four different zones. So this will be zone one. Zone two will be the front yard. Zone three will be the backyard and maybe zone four too, depending. I am gonna have to do some manual cutting with the lawnmower because there's a slope that I don't think the yucca can go down. Now, I don't know if this is a good place for the yucca to be. Um, it looks like it was missing the charging prongs. Maybe it'll do better by itself, um, but I might have to level this off a little bit. So we may have to end up leveling this, but for now, this is what we got. I wanna cut my lawn at a six the first time around especially because i left it high so i can see how well the yucca does on higher grass so i think the blades are about 
I don't know, six to eight inches tall, some of them. So it's been about a week since I cut the grass. I've been waiting for this so I don't have to cut the grass no more. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull up the Momotion app. And we're gonna add our RTK and robot. So we found the Yucca available. Start, I'm gonna set up the network connection. Okay, and then you hit join at the top. And that's supposedly connecting your Yuka to Wi-Fi. For now, binding succeeded. Okay, next we're gonna add the Yuka add. There we go. You just hit the arrow, it pops up with the RTK. And we're gonna go in and update the firmware for both the Yuka and the RTK. Now we're gonna hit join. Now my RTK did have a solid light, so I think we're good there. And we're gonna update both the firmwares. Robot version, upgrade firmware. Upgrading. Upgrading. taking so long I decided to get my drink from Smoothie King and a chair. So I'm just gonna sit here while it's updating. It's at 31%. I don't know if you guys can see that on my screen but you'll be able to see it because I'm recording my screen. But it's taking its time to update the Yuka and then I still have to do the RTK which is over there. After setting up the RTK and charging station, updating the firmware, and then charging the robot, you should be able to start mapping each zone. So here I am, following the Yuka around, drawing the perimeter of my lawn. You will have to do this for each zone, as well as drawing a path between each zone, so that your lawnmower can travel from zone to zone. So I have three zones and two paths. One path to get from the side yard to the front yard, and then another path from the side yard to the backyard. And then you'll also have to draw no-go zones, which you'll see me doing where I'm going around all the utilities. I do not want my lawnmower to go in this area. I will manually cut that sometime during the week. Right now, with the testing I'm doing, I just wanted to avoid this area in general. So you just draw another perimeter, but this is considered a no-go zone. So the lawnmower will never touch this area. All right, we got the map made and we got the no-go zone made for all the stuff over there. Um, I didn't want it to be in this general area because I think that it would get stuck and run into things. Plus there's a I don't know if there's a grounding rod or something stuck right there. Uh, looks like it's getting ready to start though. First mow. Let's see what happens. Super easy setup. Longest part was updating. But you can hear it mowing and the grass is pretty long so we'll see how good of a job it does now around here i'm gonna have to touch up for sure because uh, i don't want it to get super close to all the utility stuff Looks 
looks like it's here. The robot front will lift it. Resume working. Resume. You mean to resume? No, I shouldn't have to do anything but let this thing go. It's now cutting the perimeter. And you can actually hear it cutting now. Now this grass is pretty thick right here. But we're gonna go all the way up and that's gonna do the perimeter, I think. This is extremely long, so I would expect that it's probably going to struggle here. But so far it seems to be doing okay. Okay, now I did the perimeter. Now I'm not sure where it's going. I did set it up to do 45 degree angles for its first time. I really want 45 degree angles in my lawn. I think it'll look cool. All right, let you know if anything else exciting happens, but for now, we're gonna let it run. self-emptying lawn sweeper kit in as well as the uh, RTK wall mount but uh, this mounts to your roof line on your house and puts your RTK way up in the air so you don't have to worry about signal I'm not gonna be installing this until next year until next season uh, where I have it currently installed it's working pretty good I haven't had any issues so we're gonna probably do this next year though um, so I am going to keep this box and I'm very happy they sent this to me because I was going to buy it if they didn't send it. And this is the item we are unboxing today and going to be testing out. This is the lawn sweeper kit for the Yucca and it's a self-emptying lawn kit. So I'm sure if you guys are watching this video, you've seen all the videos of how this works. But it just basically mounts on the back right here and when it's filled up, by grass clippings it'll go, or leaves, it'll go and dump its load over wherever you set it. 
Um, you can have multiple places for it to dump its load. I'm gonna mainly have problems with leaves in my backyard and my backyard is not in the best shape right now because we had some pool overfalls and leaks my first year managing the pool. So uh, there's not a whole lot of grass back there, but there are bunch of leaves so when we go out there to test this just be aware of that um, but this goes on the back it should just sit on the back back here I think you do have to put the basket together and put the counterweight on and I think that's about it it plugs in right here to this port so that port opens up and that's where it's going to plug in we'll leave that off so let's get in here, unbox this, and then we'll install it on the yucca, and we'll go out and test it in the backyard where all the leaves are. Now it's not super bad right now with leaf coverage, but there are quite a few. I have been getting leaves on my pool, so it's begin beginning to be that time of the year, the time of the year where this is really gonna come in handy. Uh, I don't plan on using the bagger too often because I cut my grass like once every other day, sometimes every day depending on what I'm trying to do, but because I can cut my grass all the time, I don't have to really worry about keeping it bagged. But when it's leaf coverage and you want to bag your grass clippings because your grass is long, this is going to come in handy. Here's the bag. We are going to have to assemble this. so. This just goes inside of here. I think it just clips in place. So this is the installation guide. So let's go through that. Looks like you're gonna take off the underneath part to install a battery. Uh, once you get the battery installed, you're gonna take the handle off and put the counterweight on. So let's start with step one. We're gonna need a 2.5 millimeter hex bit screwdriver. Let's first wait and see if they actually have any tools in here or if I have to use my own. Sounds like this might be the tools. It says accessory kit. Yeah, there's a screwdriver. And I think these are two of the pieces you have to install. Let's open that up. Yeah, there's the screws for that. I'm gonna set that over here. And we're gonna need the screwdriver first, it looks like. So we'll be removing something on the underneath. Now I brought my lawnmower into the garage and powered it off yesterday to get ready for this video. Here's a little handle. That's for the bag, I think. And then this as well. Here's the actual sweeper kit itself with the brush on the back. So this is the main component that houses the brains and all the electronics behind the sweeper uh, with the self dumping. This connects to your lawnmower right here and it does have a little place to store it so when you're not using the bag you can clip it in place there. And the handle goes on here as well. We're gonna set that down next to the yucca. We got the yucca battery which when you get the sweeper kit you double the amp hour so Normally on the Yuka it's 4.5 amp hours, but you're getting a second 4.5 amp hour battery. So then you'll have a total of nine amp hours. We'll be testing that. I've been using my Yuka with a single battery for a couple weeks now. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see how that works. And that's the first thing we're gonna install, I believe. And the last thing in the box is the counterweight, which I believe you have to pop the white plastic piece off install this and uh, we'll move down to that section right now oh there's a bunch of grass in there that I didn't get out I guess okay well we'll get to that later now these screws are held in place so um, if you tip it over they're not gonna fall out that's nice and here's the main battery as you can see, it's really clean in there. So this is all sealed to protect from the elements. And we're gonna go in and plug in our new battery right here. And we gotta make sure we keep the wires in the middle. Yeah, there you go. We'll take that 2.5 millimeter hex, secure this down. And there's two screws here, so make sure you get them both. And this is pretty simple, so anybody could do this. Your cables can only go in one way. So you take your white cable, plug it into the white port, 
that little tab will go where that square hole is. This one will have a tab right here on the connector. Got waterproof connections there, and that's nice to see. You can see my discs are no longer aluminum color. They're pretty black. This part are the blades. Blades were shiny aluminum when I started. Handle. And these screws. And it goes towards the back. There's that. We need this. All right, and now what we need? And it's basically saying we need to install this like so. Okay. And that'll hold it in place really good. Okay, we're knowing that. This we will need on the next step. So we're gonna take this and put our bag on. So our bag is gonna go like this. And then this metal piece, the angle is gonna go towards the bag like this. And this is gonna all clip onto these black outer plastic ring things here. And they just kind of clip in place here. There we go. Okay, that should be good. So we got the lawn sweeper kit set up. We're gonna go drive it to the backyard, set up our dump zone and it out okay we are connected via Bluetooth we're gonna leave the charging station in so it'll automatically back up and then we can control it so we'll head to the backyard which is right there there's the gate So I haven't trimmed the yard in a few weeks. So you're gonna see a lot of long pieces of grass and weeds. Um, same with over by the pool. I've been letting the grass grow back here so we can test the sweeper kit. And uh, it looks like most of the backyard is dead over here behind the pool. Cause this part doesn't get very much water because of the trees. So next year we're gonna be fixing this issue. Uh, usually this whole section right here is green, but over here it gets hit with a lot of water from the pool. Sometimes the pool is overfilled. Definitely need to do some landscaping back here. We haven't even owned the house yet for a year. Um, it, it's coming up. Uh, we closed on November 2nd of last year, so the House needs work, we're, work, we're working on it slowly. Um, but we're gonna do landscaping all the way around the pool next year with rock and all down the fence line. Um, and then probably most of this back part is gonna be rock with stone and um, walking stones and things. But eventually we're gonna rock this out. So my yard does look terrible right now, but it's gonna get better eventually. Now over here we get pretty good grass growing and we're gonna also rock around this part of the pool and probably most of that and we're gonna clean up underneath the deck and make it look nice. So right now it doesn't look the greatest but this isn't about how good my lawn looks. Hopefully next year I can show you a before and after. We are gonna be putting in a shed. There's gonna be a lot of work being done back here and we wanna extend the deck a little bit, make it look a little better. We may eventually replace this pool too, I don't know. It seems like it's had better days. Uh, but there's a bunch of leaves that have fallen. Uh, most of them are dead. And I went through here yesterday, picked up all the sticks that I could pick up because that's one of the things you really gotta watch out for. We're gonna go through and see how well the yucca picks up these leaves. And hopefully it does a good job. Now this right here is a no-go zone, so I'm gonna have to probably manually drive to pick those up. We'll see how well that works. And also I'm gonna try to do this without reprogramming the um, map here. We might have to re 
draw the zone because of the bag. We're gonna have to see how that works. But first thing we gotta do is we have to draw a dump zone, which we're gonna put over here. So I'm gonna put my dump zone over here. Now I don't think we can put a dump zone where there's a no-go zone, but I'll say this is where our dump zone is gonna go. Dumping spot. Too close to the perimeter. Essentially what I want to do is have it dump next to my gate. And my gate is right over there for the back of the yard. And we can just rake the grass out or the leaves, the clippings. So let's put our dump zone here. Can we do that? Dump spot is too close to the perimeter. Yeah. Okay. Too close to the no-go zone and too close to the perimeter. So what about here? Too close to the perimeter. I'm about two feet away. How about here? Well, maybe right here. Oh, I'm too close to the perimeter. That's not going to work. Okay, this will be fine. So does that work? We got a dumping spot now. Oh yeah, we do. I can see it on the map. And you can see the little trash can. So we're going to drive the yucca this way. It's going to start doing the perimeter. We're going to confirm area three is the backyard. You can zoom in here and see there's the no-go zone. There's the dumping zone we just put in. There's my antenna, the RTK unit, which is right up there on my deck. So let's go ahead and hit confirm. We're going to enable sweeping. Dump interval, so every 107 square foot it's going to dump. Um, let's change that to like 320. Uh, we're going to keep all our other perimeters the same. And we're going to hit start. It is recommended to start with zigzag first for sweeping to increase efficiency. Do you want to proceed with the current settings? Yes, I want to do it the same way I have been and see what happens. Now, not real sure why it's going this way. It might start over there. I thought it started over here though. You can see on the map that it has my crisscross pattern. One thing I do have to be careful with is making sure that the cords from my pool are picked up so they don't get chopped up when it's mowing. Okay, here we go. Here's the first mow with the sweeper basket and it's already screwing up. It didn't work. Yeah, because you started in the worst possible place. What is it doing? It's cutting grass. But I really don't know why it started right here. That didn't really make sense. But I'm curious to see how it does. If it makes any adjustments with the bag being on there. Um, or if it runs into stuff when it turns. If it runs into stuff like it just did. There's a pretty good chance that I'm going to have to redraw the map for the backyard. I'm really only going to use this in the backyard because that's where all the trees are. I may use it in the front yard every once in a while. Yeah, see right now? It's stuck on the pool. Is it going to get unstuck? It did get unstuck. Bunch of leaves right here too, so... It'll eventually get those when it starts to crisscross pattern. Now I drew this really close here, so this is actually still doing exactly what it did the first time. I wanted it to go up and around. I don't want it to hit this cord though. Okay, good. And it's much louder with the sweeper kit because it's got that thing spinning in the bottom to pick it up. So you can hear it picking up the leaves. Uh, we'll really be able to tell when we get it over in that section. And I have it cutting pretty slow as well. So 
it'll take a little bit of time to do this. But I wanted to get a good cut. That's the big reason why we have it going this slow. And we're just watching. Now we can actually see a preview on the camera. And we can control it this way so you can actually see where you're driving and everything. It takes a little bit to load, but and it's a little slow. But if you're inside, and this is of course going to be outside, you can control this from your bedroom, your bathroom, anywhere you want. Now it's a little laggy because we're pretty far away from Wi-Fi. When it's more in the front yard, it's a lot easier to control. So here we are, you can see me standing there and it's starting to do the crisscross pattern. So it does a 45 this way and then it comes back and does a 45 that way. So it's gonna look like it's not getting all the grass. You, I mean, you can see how tall it is right there. It's gonna look like it's not getting that, but that's just because it's gonna do this and then it's gonna do it again in a different direction. So this is why it takes so long, but it looks really cool on the yard when, when it's done. And I think it's gonna be even cooler with the uh, sweeper because it has a like a roller on the back that will help with making the lines and stuff. But other than that, pretty impressive again I did not do anything differently than when it didn't have the thing on the back oh I think it's going to the dump zone this might be perfect timing all right it's coming over here to the dump zone which I set in the middle of the yard and it should automatically dump Oh, I had a lot of grass in there. As you can see, my yard's almost dead to begin with. But it's going to be emptying right at this spot every time it's done now. And then when it's finished, it goes back to where it left off from cutting and starts cutting the yard again. Pretty cool. Alright, so what it'll do now, the next time it dumps, it's going to come over here. And then it's going to slam up against that and it's going to turn around and dump more grass in the same spot. Now, you can set up multiple dump zones so if you get too much in one area it can move to another one. And you can, I think you can set the amount of times it dumps in each area, I believe. Uh, if not, I think that might be a feature that's coming out. But it did a pretty good job, man. It got a lot of grass here, it looks like. Um, the pile's pretty, pretty tall, I'd say about... I don't know, 8 inches, 10 inches up. And uh, we can even have it haul more before it dumps next time if we wanted to. It'll probably dump about four times in my yard, I would think. Now the cool thing about this is that I can go back and look at the Momotion app. I can see how far along it is. 22% uh, mode so tomorrow when I come back out here I can have it start at 22% and continue where it left off so really it's not going to make a difference if I finish this video today or tomorrow if for whatever reason you didn't see this percentage and you forgot you can go back into the task record and you can see all your tasks so this is the last one we did so when we stop this it'll add another task record here and it'll say the percentage and how much it completed oh yeah you can definitely see the lines they're a little bit more pronounced um, I don't know if it comes out on camera it does 45s in both directions and it looks like a crisscross pattern uh, it actually shows up a lot better in the front yard right here new ones looks like that's a fresh leaf and some older brittle ones which are probably easier to pick up maybe I don't know so there's a couple leaves there let's see if it has any yeah picked up the big ones and missed the small ones but it'll come back and get those yeah some of this I'm gonna have to manually do So it doesn't get stuck, which is perfectly fine for right now. Okay, it looks like it's going to dump one more time. 
which would make sense because yeah, see it just smashed that moved it out of the way and now it's going to dump right in that spot oh, yeah that was quite a bit actually it's not going to get very much back here because there's just the leaves i guess that's no grass though let's go to return to charging station so recharge i'll have to open the door now here's a charging station I'm also going to make this look a lot better and build a garage for it and that will be another video. I already have some ideas I think that are going to work. But this is a little spot for it. I got electric over here so it's a perfect spot and it's right next to the RTK. Now it's not in the wide open because there's a house on the right next to us but there we go. So on the front of the device right here. This is the vision sensor, which also includes the camera. This is where the front camera is located. It does have a little bitty windshield wiper on there. If there's anything obstructing the view, you can use your little windshield wiper and wipe off your camera. Pretty cute. And here's the top of the mower. So you have a stop button, which will completely shut the lawnmower off. So if there's any emergency or if it runs over something or if you're walking around monitoring it your first few times if it gets close to something you can hit that button and it'll shut the lawnmower off and then right here is where you change the cutting height so this thing cuts really low to the ground uh, five might even be too low for you it's pretty low for me i might actually adjust this next season to maybe a seven um, but this is how you adjust the cutting height with the Yuka, it's manual. With the Luba, it's automatic. You can adjust the cutting height in the app. But if your cutting height doesn't change throughout the year very often, you, you really don't even have to mess with this too much. Uh, once you get it to the height that you like, you can leave it set, and that's pretty much how I would do it. So here's the camera. Uh, I demonstrated that, but it's here, so if anybody were to walk up and try to take your yucca out of your yard, you can see who it was. This right here is a counterweight, which you have to have if you have the second battery installed and the bag installed, because it adds more weight to the back. Without this, the yucca would just be doing a wheelie the whole time. And it has a series of buttons here. They do different things. There's a guide on the mower when you get it. I left mine on here, but it tells you what each sequence does so if you push home and start yuka returns to the charging station if you push the grass and start it'll resume the work uh, if you push the home button twice it'll put it in security lock mode or unlock mode so if it's locked when you come up to it you can hit home twice to unlock it and then you can control it with the app home is a security lock status checking power is if you if you push the power button for five seconds it'll turn the mower off if you push it for five seconds again it'll turn it back on uh, this thing's always on unless you're putting it in storage or doing work on it so any maintenance that you do you want to power it off uh, and that's pretty much what that's for and then it's got a rain sensor here which if it detects rain it will automatically go back to the charging station it will stop its mowing session and then drive back to the charging station this thing back here is where you plug in the lawn sweeper kit has a little waterproof plug and this thing's pretty robust if you couldn't tell already um, i've been beating the crap out of it throughout the, all of this testing and that'll do it for the Mamotion yuka if you guys like this video make sure you hit that like button if you want to see more content about the Mamotion, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as hitting the bell so you know when i upload i'm going to be making several more videos about this as well as new videos about the luba when i get that make sure you Go down to the comments section and let me know what you think about this new futuristic tool that I have. And I'll see you guys in the next Remotion video. Thanks for watching and have a good day.